Today I'm going to be talking about Versace Eros Eau de Parfum and I'll be letting you know how this latest release stacks up against the previous or the toilette version from 2012. To find out if this is an improvement on the original or whether you should swerve this one, stay tuned to Mags Frags. Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 84 of my Fragrance 365 project where I give my thoughts on a different fragrance every day for a whole year. So today's scent of the day is the latest flanker to the Versace Eros line and this one is Eros Eau de Parfum. Yet it seemed like in 2020 it was definitely the year of the EDP uh, and it also seemed like every major brand uh, released an Eau de Parfum flanker of their flagship lines. This one came out right at the back end of 2020 and it kind of quietly crept in onto the shelves uh, relatively undetected without any major marketing behind it whatsoever. Yeah, so we're going to kick things off by looking at the presentation of this one. Uh, so like the original Eros EDT from 2012, this one comes in the familiar square bottle design in an attractive dark teal colourway. The only noticeable difference is the um, Eau de Parfum branding on the bottom of the bottle there. It still features the brand's Medusa motif, uh, which is embossed into the glass. Uh, and around the edge um, of the bottle, we've got the familiar uh, Versace patterning as well as on the back. Uh, we have a, a click on cap. Uh, that is it's part metal part plastic uh, and this also features the Versace logo in gold on the top there's also a gold atomizer and the spray quality I would say is really good you get a nice big old blast of juice from that one the main difference in presentation is actually in the box design and the EDP box um, is actually, I think, a big improvement on the somewhat bland design uh, that you get with the EDT. Uh, but overall, I think that the, uh, the overall design of the Eros bottles, I think they look really great and uh, they also feel really premium and solidly made in the end. So yeah, I would give the uh, presentation of Eros a 9 out of 10. Yeah, the top notes in this one are spearmint, Italian mandarin, Italian lemon and candied apple. In the mid, there's geranium, clary sage and ambroxan. And in the base, there's vanilla, leather, sandalwood, bitter orange, cedar and patchouli. So from the note breakdown, this one differs from the EDT version with the inclusion of leather, candied apple and a couple of orange notes. It's also said to have swapped out the tonka bean for the note of vanilla, uh, but from the first spray and through the dry down, I've got to be honest, I can't notice any difference whatsoever in the actual aroma between this and the EDT. The only thing I would say is that the mint note uh, may have been dialed back ever so slightly in the EDP because the EDT version does seem to retain that bright, crisp freshness longer into the dry down. This is still the same heavy eating clubbing fragrance with a piercing, energetic scent character that cuts through the air and it's one that arrives into a room 10 seconds before you do. It's a very clean, uplifting and masculine fragrance with mint and lemon bringing a sparklingly fresh zestiness in the opening. The Ambroxan provides the masculine backbone and this sits on a base of sweet and woody notes. The original Eau de Toilette version was widely regarded as one of the ultimate clubbing fragrances and this one also sits in that category. It has a fresh summery scent character, uh, but it's way too loud for me to wear during the day um, in warm temperatures or as an office scent. 
This is definitely for younger guys heading out to the clubs who don't want to fail to get noticed. Uh, the dry down on this one is, I would say, isn't as in your face and I do think it might be a touch more grown up than the EDT version, uh, but it's still a powerhouse fragrance that you need to really go easy with on the trigger. Uh, this is reminiscent of the old retro scents from the 1980s and 90s that were ultra masculine and like literally just filled the room. The performance is one of the best that you'll find from any designer fragrance both in projection and longevity. You may squeeze an extra hour or so out of this one over the other toilet version, uh, but you'd get a solid 8 to 10 hours out of the EDT, so do you really need much more than that? I'm not sure. Um, this is one where less is more. A couple of sprays is definitely all you're going to need, otherwise uh, listen out for the people coughing and choking all around you. So in summary, if you already own the Eau de Toilette version, then you definitely don't need the Eau de Parfum. They smell almost identical, uh, but if like me, you're coming to the end of a bottle, then yes, by all means pick up the EDP and you'll just maybe get a touch more longevity out of it. Or you could just go for the Eros Flame, uh, which is also an Eau de Parfum concentration and which I also think smells better than both of these two. Uh, but you can't go wrong with any of these three and uh, Versace Eros Eau de Parfum gets a 9 out of 10 from me. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day. Uh, tomorrow, I'm giving my thoughts on another great retro fragrance, so make sure to tune in tomorrow to find out which one I'm talking about. Also, if you found this video useful, as always, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It's great to uh, receive all your support and your kind messages, and it's also great to hear your opinions on all these uh, fragrances that feature in these videos, so make sure to keep your comments coming down in the comment section. So as always, thank you very much for watching, stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for an oldie but a goodie. Bye bye for now.